Greetings and welcome back to yet another episode of After Earth Plus modding tutorials and in this one I'm gonna show you how we can actually alter the stats of the player and also how to grind in flight. This actually wasn't possible before the latest patch it just aired but thankfully because they added a bunch of other attributes we can do these things now. Before we get into the code let's first look at the file structure which is very important if you actually want to make stat alterations. So first of all go under your mods folder which should be located under C, user, so your username, documents, my games, binding of Attica, Isaac, Afterbirth plus mods and then just create a new folder, I called it stats and first of all you have the main.lua file which is obviously the code that you see right in front of you but there are two other folders which are very important here. The first one is resources folder, then the gfx, items, collectibles and in there is basically your sprite or how your item will look like in game. For now I just, I'm just using the stock one that, that came with the example for Hothead because I think that's the easiest one to do it and it doesn't really important. Basically you can change this to whatever you want it to be but for the, just for the time being it's gonna be the same as every other video. But what's more important is the content folder because it has the items.xml file in it and if you just open that, I showed you before how that xml file has to look like for passive or active items but in this case what happens is that you have to add another attribute basically every time you want to make a stat alteration and that attribute is called cache and in this case because we're making a damage up item we just add the damage flag and you might be wondering okay so we have this cache and damage but what if you want to add more of them or maybe which others exist and to maybe get a better feel for that what you want to do is go under your main Isaac rebirth fol folder so basically where your Isaac the binding of Isaac is installed go under tools and then there you'll see a resource extractor. If you just run this here and go back to your original folder and just wait a bit, you'll see that you have a new folder called resources. And in there, if you open the resources folder, you're gonna see a bunch of XML files, including the items.xml. And I have it open here. Uh, and you can see that there's just a bunch of items here. And basically this is every single item that already exists in the game. So if you wanna get maybe an example of how to set the XML file up, depending on the other items, so let's look at Magic Mushroom here. You can see that Magic Mu Mushroom increases damage, range, and speed. So it has three cache flags. While something like uh, Roid Rage just increases the range and speed, so it only has two cache flags. Or if certain items like the Wooden Spoon only increase speed, which means they only have one cache. But this is not only useful for cache and, and seeing which flags exist, uh, it also has a flying cache, just, just as a side note, so that means you can get flying by using this method. But yeah, this is not only useful for caches and seeing which stats exist, but you can see that there's a bunch of other things that you can actually do with it. You can see how to add cooldowns, whatever that means at this point. And if you go down, you can see how th that there's a familiar, which we can't really use yet, or at least I don't know how to use it yet. And there's also a trinket. Uh, which actually allows the usage of trinkets and at this point there's a lot of mods on the Steam Workshop which actually provide examples so if you want to learn how to do that just go on the Steam Workshop and you can see that there's a bunch of examples there and just download the code and maybe play around with it and then you can do things with that. Uh, okay now that we have our items.xml set up so basically it's the same as before the only thing we added is our the cache damage flag. Here's the code. So the first line here is, uh, again, we just registered the mod under the stats mod name. Even though there was an update, the API version is still 1, so just leave the 1 there for the time being. Uh, then we get our item, basically, like we did before. Our item name is Pyrokinesis, like, like in all of the previous videos. And then we have the stats mod cache update function. And I'm not really sure if that cache update function has to have the name cache update, or maybe it can be different. But for the time being, I just left it as cache update, because that's what Tyrone said on on the stream and I think it makes sense at least in the sense that it's a unique name and we will all know what to do basically when you see the mod so maybe just for an example's sake it, the name is as it's supposed to be and it has two parameters the player which is calling the cache so maybe for having two players for what for whatever reason and you want to apply a certain uh, stats up only to one or the other but I don't think the player variable works at this point the parameter so I still get the player via the old way by saying Isaac.getPlayer0 and then we get the cache flag and basically the cache flag is which single effect has changed and in this case damage has changed and then again you'll, you're asking me so we here you can see that I'm comparing the cache flag to cache flag dot cache damage but how do I know which flags exist and again we have to go to the documentation for that and if you just go in there and just open again the enums the enumerations and if you just say cache 
uh, you can see that there's a bunch of cache flex here. And you can see that we have the cache damage, the cache fire delay, the cache shot speed, range, flying, luck, and you have all of them. If you want to just make a super powerful item, just, just add a cache all and that's gonna work in your favor. But you can see that there's a bunch of things here and basically these are all the stats that you can affect at this point in time. Uh, but, but for the time being, we're just comparing the damage and so what we say, if you just want to open this or not open this, access it, we will say if cash flag is the same as cash flag dot cash damage because that indicates that this is a damage setup item. And of course, the first thing we'll have to check if we even have the item because there's no point in increasing our damage if you just don't have the item at that point. So then again, I just had a debug text in there so we can see some things happening on the screen and I just increased the player damage by two. And then again, you might be wondering how do we know which attributes exist? And again, if you go under the reference manual, if you go in the player entity class, um, entity player class, sorry, my bad. I always mix those two up. So if you go under entity player class and you can see, just scroll to the bottom, the very bottom, you can see a bunch of attributes here, which are added. So fire delay, max fire delay, shot speed, damage, tear height, tear falling acceleration, move speeds, uh, can fly and luck. And basically these are, these are all the stats and the caches that you can change at this point in time. And the only way you should change them is via the function called cache update. And not really the function that's important, but the callback. You can see that the callback here is actually the mod callbacks dot MC evaluate cache and not MC, uh, not MC post update like in the previous videos. Uh, this is basically done so it ensures that this only triggers once. Because if, if what you did was had a post update it would actually trigger every frame and your damage would just keep increasing which is not something that you want or maybe you do want that but in this case we only want the item to affect us only when we pick it up and then of course when we say the mc value at cache basically every time that the cache gets updated then we will be calling this function and this function will check if we have the collectible and then obviously we will just be increasing our damage by two in this situation so let's get hop into the game and i'll just show you how this works Welcome to the game. And you can see that the text on the screen says that we don't have an item. So how can we change that? Well, let's just open our console by pressing the tilde key and just give ourselves a new item. It's called pyrokinesis or alternatively, you can just write C51 because that's its ID. So if you give ourselves this, you can see that the text changes to damage up. You can't really see it because of the other text. But what's more important, check the left side of the screen, which shows the stats and see if the damage goes up by two. And of course it does. Basically, now that we picked up the item via the console or just by finding it in the game, what happens is that our damage increases by two and this is only gonna happen once. If you want to maybe add damage every time you pick up the item, then you have to do some additional checks. But for the time being, this is how you actually alter the stats. Let's go back to our second example, I'll show you how to actually edit multiple stats at once and also how to add flying. So as you can see, our second example is pretty much the same as our first one. The only thing I did change is added two blocks to it. The first block basically checks if the cache flag flying is enabled and the other one checks if the cache flag range is enabled. And if flying is enabled, we just change the attribute of can fly, which means we are telling the game that the player can fly. And we set it to true because this is a Boolean variable. It can only be true or false. And then we're basically checking if the cache flag range is enabled. And if it is, then we're just adding one range to the player. Another thing you have to do if you want these stats to be applied is go in your items.xml folder and just add additional flags under the cache attribute. So just, just, just shoot them off like this with spaces in between. And when you restart the game, you have to restart the game for this to work. Just writing Glua mod in the console is not actually gonna apply the changes. You have to restart the game to see the stats uh, to see different stats. And now that basically this is it, let's hop into the game and we'll show you that this works. Welcome to the game. And you can see that Isaac is quite in a conundrum and he can't really get over to the other side. So let's give ourselves our new item and see if it works. Give items if I have one. And now I urge you to check the stats on the left and see if they change as we give ourselves the item. And of course, as you can see, the stats go up and you can see that Isaac now has this floaty animation, which means that he's flying. And now thankfully we can fly over walls and rocks and poops and spikes and things like that. So everything works as expected. And of course we still get damaged by the fire. Uh, with that said, it's very easy to change the stats of the Isaac uh, entity and it's it's very nice that mods have patched this out. And of course, I expect a lot more things to come out in, in the coming days and of course, we just have to get by with it. With that said, I hope you enjoyed this one and I hope to see you next time.
So this is the end of this video. Of course, click the screen if you want to go on the next one when it's out. Uh, but for the time being, I'm really impressed, not impressed, but maybe more, it's interesting to see just how Nicholas and, and the team have patched this game and the API to actually make some things more accessible to us. I know a lot of us were losing our mind because we thought some things just can't be done and it's the most frustrating thing ever to actually try to do something and then to figure out it's a function maybe doesn't work or maybe just doesn't exist yet. So the fact that they're actually patching the scene and actually commenting the code is giving me great hope that this will be some very good modding tools in the future. Of course, for now, some things are still expected to be buggy. Not everything is perfect. Obviously, this takes a lot of work. And I hope you can all be patient and understand. But still, with the tools we have now, we can actually do a lot of things already. And I hope you saw what was possible via the few videos I've posted up until this point. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I hope to see you next time.